hormone disruptors. That is something I don't want anywhere near my body and I'm guessing you don't either. There's actually so many different ingredients that I will absolutely not use in my skincare and beauty products and today I'm going to share that list with you. As you know, I have a background in the sciences. I am a I have a bachelor's of science in biomechanical engineering. Actually, it's mechanical engineering with a concentration in biomechanics. And I also have a master's of science in nursing. I'm very uh, sciencey, but at the same time, I am a beauty editor. I'm actually the beauty editor at Cosmopolitan Middle East Magazine. So I kind of have my feet dipped in different waters in the science world, the beauty world, and I am meshing it all together. Hi, my name is Lauren O'Connell. And as I just said, I'm the beauty editor at Cosmopolitan Middle East Magazine. I'm also a blogger. I have a website called planetlauren.com and I blog about all things related to women's wellness, spirituality, uh, skincare, beauty products, and everything in between. I live in Dubai, although I am from Connecticut, USA. You can see the date trees in the uh, reflections of my windows. The weather is so beautiful right now. It's the beginning of January and I thought to myself, Lauren, make the most of it and film some videos outside. So I did just recently turn 40 years old and I had a video that went viral on YouTube. I have been posting videos on YouTube for a long time and I've never had anything go viral. And then overnight things just changed and I guess maybe that's what happens. But I do wanna say first and foremost because a lot of people seem to comment on this and to be honest, some of the comments are a little bit abusive, but before I get into the skincare, I just want to mention Botox. As you can see, my eyebrows don't move. This is just something that is part of my anatomy. It's how I am. I've always been like this. You can look at my first videos on YouTube and there is no Botox on this forehead. I promise you, if there was, I'd talk about it. Uh, my eyebrows just don't move when I talk. Now I can move them, but that takes some serious effort on my part. So for some reason, I just, I don't know, um, maybe I just don't have strong muscles here. They just don't move. And I do get Botox from time to time. I haven't had it in quite a while. When I say Botox, I'm talking about all different types of neuromodulator injectors. I've never used anything besides Botox. I get it right here just for the crow's feet. And I did have some preventative Botox right there for uh, 11s because I felt like they were starting to become a bit more pronounced. I think at this point, all the Botox I had has worn off see but uh, I'm not sure I had it in the summertime that was the last time is beginning of January I'll probably get it soon just to just to keep it going there are no fillers on my face either people seem to think I get lots of fillers but no fillers I do get uh, laser treatments every now and then so that is my story I'm totally open about it please don't think I'm ever trying to fool you kid you or whatever I'm not. So let's get into these ingredients. One of my pastimes, and honestly, it's a hobby of mine, is just researching skincare products, the ingredients. When I first got into really understanding ingredients, I would spend hours and hours researching them, finding out what they are in the products. And I started by just taking products I was using, flipping them over, looking at the labels, and Googling every single one looking at research papers, finding out who funded those research papers, all of that, that's my science background. And you can look through previous videos of mine, you'll see that I talk about ingredients quite a bit. So in terms of the ones that I will not use, and this is coming from my own personal research, um, and keep in mind, my list is always growing. You can see I'm putting all these disclaimers now because I know people are just gonna come for me. But my list is always growing and this is what I thought of this morning when I jotted everything down. If I forgot anything, if I add anything, I'll make a part two video. So number one is pro drying alcohols. I used to re not even realize they were in my skincare products and I have very dry skin. So putting anything drying on the skin is just, makes everything a thousand times worse. I used to use foundations that had 
pro-drying alcohols. And what they do is they're going to just destroy your the outer, your stratum corneum. They're gonna destroy your skin barrier. And in doing that, your skin's gonna be red, irritated. It's the dry skin's gonna look drier. It's going to look older. If you have oily skin, initially you might really like it because it's gonna suck up a lot of that oil. But your body is all of a sudden gonna to think to itself, uh, I need to make more oil. So you're gonna become even more oily. Overall, it's not worth using anything that is a pro-drying alcohol. Now this is things like ethanol, alcohol, denatured alcohol, SD alcohol. If you go to my Instagram account and scroll down in my feed, I have some infographics I made a while ago that just has all of them uh, listed. You can just screenshot it. Now don't confuse the pro-drying alcohols with fatty alcohols. Everything's always complicated, isn't it? There's alcohols like sterile alcohol, sterile alcohol. These are wonderful for the skin. They are so nourishing and they really contribute to having a supple, just moisturized, healthy looking, radiant, youthful, glowing, all those adjectives, skin. So if you're looking at your ingredients label and all of a sudden you see an alcohol, don't freak out just yet. Go to my Instagram and I have the good ones, the bad ones, and just the okay ones listed with a nice caption underneath explaining everything. But uh, alcohols, the pro-drying ones, are not allowed anywhere near me. I don't even want them in my house. But, uh, you know, and that's just not for the face, but for body products as well. No pro-drying alcohols. Then on to oxybenzone. This is a hormone disruptor. Now I recently had my hormones checked. I have a friend that's absolutely obsessed with hormones and she talks about it so, so much every time we go out that I finally said to her, okay, I'm just gonna go get mine checked. I, I don't know when the last time I did it was and I'm gonna go get my blood work done and see how my hormones are doing. My doctor said my hormones are all normal. Everything is perfect, it's great. So. Uh, that was good. She said that I also wasn't going, I wasn't perimenopausal. A lot of my girlfriends are. I was curious about that. So I say if you don't know your hormone status, maybe you want to go get it checked and avoid oxybenzone. This is a hormone disruptor, not something you want to have messing with your body. Also parabens. Now parabens are kind of controversial. There was a very flawed study a while ago that said that parabens could lead to breast cancer. If you look into that study or you just kind of read about it, there are a lot of issues with that study. That was sort of the one study that then became the, the, the norm where parabens were all of a sudden bad and companies would always put paraben free even though the companies would think to themselves, well, this study wasn't a good one, but this is what the consumers want, so let's just put it on the products. Since then, other studies have come out that are a bit wishy-washy and I'm just like, you know what? I don't want this anywhere near my body. So for me, I don't do anything with parabens. Unfortunately, some of Charlotte Tilbury's makeup has parabens in it. And so those products I don't use. So just look at the ingredients labels. You'll see things like methyl paraben and there's a few other ones. And for me personally, I avoid it. Of course for you, do whatever you feel is right for you. There is no rules here and you know, I'm completely open. If I had a girlfriend saying she was gonna continue using her paraben products, that's fine for her. You know, it's just, for me, I personally don't use them. Now, formaldehyde and formaldehyde releasing agents. These can be incredibly, incredibly sensitizing to the skin. And actually, Sunday Riley in her Good Genes Lactic Acid, which I love, she had DMDM high dantoin in it. She's since taken it out. Um, they don't have that ingredient in that particular lactic acid serum anymore, but I would not use that serum for a few years because of that ingredient in it. And it wasn't until she reformulated, which I think came from social media pressure, that then I started using the serum, which is a great serum. But at the time, one of my girlfriends said, I don't care that there's formaldehyde in it, I'm using it. And so did my mom. But for me, it's a no. And it's just, it's incredibly sensitizing to the skin. Also look for the ingredient formalin, Gly glyoxal, bronopol, um, and imidazolindinol, sorry, urea. I, it, you're gonna have to Google it to find out the full name, but um, these are ingredients that I just personally will not use on my body 
anywhere. And look in your body creams, your body lotions that you're using. Chances are you might find some of these ingredients in there, especially if you're using uh, body products from, you know, that you find at the grocery store, Target. Uh, I just seem to find a lot of them in there, especially the parabens and the uh, formaldehyde releaser that I just talked about. So I personally use CeraVe's moisturizing lotion. If you go to my body, uh, body care routine at 40 years old, you'll see it in there. And that one is completely safe with all the ingredients. I also don't use talc. Um, talc, first of all, is a really cheap it's just a filler I feel in cosmetic products and it looks horrible on the skin. Talc is very uh, chalky. If you ever have an eyeshadow and it just feels so chalky on your on your skin, it looks chalky. Even the pigment looks kind of chalky. Chances are it's made with talc. I know someone that started a cosmetics brand and she said to me, she, she didn't know anything about makeup. She just wanted to start a cosmetics brand. And it was the type of cosmetics where she was buying ones already made and just getting them put into her own stylized palettes. And she sent them to me and I said to her, first of all, there was so many drying alcohols in the lip products. So that for me was a no. But then also she had talc in the eyeshadows. It was actually the first ingredient. And I said to her, you know, with using talc, not only could this potentially be linked to asbestos and it's just not a good ingredient to have on your skin at all. I know skin doesn't breathe, but you know the saying when your skin breathes, this just blocks everything. And I said, you know, it also just doesn't perform as well as non-talc eyeshadows. And she said to me, oh, I was wondering why it always looked so, um, I can't remember what word she used, but it wasn't a good one to describe her makeup products. And I said, yeah, that's because of the talc. And <laughs> I mean, I don't know. She's still selling them, I think. I haven't looked into it in a while, and I hope she does well, of course, but, um, you know, I feel like you got to know your ingredients. So talc for me is a no. It's used as fillers sometimes in uh, lotions or serums, and I just avoid it at all costs. I don't want talc anywhere near me. Also, phthalates. Now, this is Phthalates are spelled with a PH. It's P-H-T-H. So just look for that. And these are preservatives. They're solvents and binding agents. So they're just in the formulas to kind of make sure the tech, the consistency, the texture of it is the way that the uh, manufacturer wants, or they're there to just keep the product fresh. And um, the issue with these is that they can cause different they can cause breast cancer as well as neurological issues and uh, respiratory issues. I do have some notes in front of me just so I don't forget anything. Um, phthalates are just to me something I don't want anywhere near my body. Once again, it's just like the hormone, hormone disruptors coming up and I don't want to be messing around with anything, especially at this age, this stage in my life. You know, I'm here to live well and to enjoy my life, and I don't want to be putting anything on my skin that could hinder that. And you know, none of the products that I'm using, I would say, are perfect. They're only going to be perfect when I make them myself. So this is just, you know, if you have some some products with these ingredients, I'm not saying you have to throw everything out, but maybe just be mindful for the next time you purchase. And keep in mind too that to have these detrimental effects, you either have to be using the product for a long, long, long time for it to compound in your system and create these issues. You also might have to just use extremely large quantities, which are never going to be in your products in the first place. But this is just a very proactive measure, I guess, to making sure you're getting the most out of your skincare. Now the next one, which I just hate with a capital H is fragrance. Fragrance should never be in skincare products. The problem is that sometimes when these products are made, they just smell awful from the ingredients that are in them. So you put a little fragrance on there, it gives it a nice scent and then the customer gets it. Oh, it smells like oranges, it smells like roses, whatever, and it just feels luxurious to put it on your skin. The problem is when you see that ingredient called perfume slash fragrance, that that fragrance, because of a sort of a legal loophole, can have anything in there and they, the company does not need to disclose what it is you will never know because it's considered a trade secret. Your fragrance is a trade secret. So you don't have to share what's in that fragrance and 
it could have anything in it. It could have the alcohol, the phthalates, the parabens, anything in there, and you just don't know. Also, fragrance is just sensitizing to the skin, and it's going to aid your skin. It's not going to make your skin look better. If anything, it's going to make your skin look a little bit worse. So I avoid all fragrances on my face and my body. Now, when it comes to essential oils, to be honest with you, I'm not a fan of having essential oils in my products. I also find them very sensitizing. The only product I can think of that has essential oils in it that I use is my foundation, and that is the Nude Sticks Tinted Cover uh, Foundation. It's almost more of a, a tinted moisturizer, but it does have some uh, some essential oils in there. And it'll look like Gerianol, um, Lena Lul, and I don't like those in big quantities. I will start to get watery eyes. I'll start sniffing a lot. And to me, just figure out better formulas and don't put these fragrances in there, please. So moving on, there's also isopropyl palmitate. Now I have very dry skin. Isopropyl palmitate is a mattifying ingredient. So some people might like them if they have oily skin or shiny skin. For me, it just dries me out and I feel like it really exacerbates the fine lines I have around my eyes. So I just am flat out against this ingredient. It is also sometimes in chapsticks. And the other day I was using this chapstick that I bought at Ulta last summer. My daughter and I bought a few of them because they, I don't know, we just like them. They're in, they're huge. The sizes of them are massive. It reminded me of those old lip smackers. You remember the, like those big ones back in the 90s? Anyways, uh, I was thinking to myself, you know, I like this lip gloss, but after a while, my lips feel so dry. Looked at the ingredients list and I missed it, but there was isopropyl palmitate in it. So ugh, I will not be using that again. I also, I have to say on my watch list, this is my, on my watch list is an ingredient called phenoxyethanol. This looks like it's also a hormone disruptor too, but before I comment on that officially, I need to do more research and I just haven't gotten to it yet. The issue with phenoxyethanol is it is literally in everything. I mean everything. And my skincare products are full of phenoxyethanol. Now, once again, if I was making my own skincare products, I would not put phenoxyethanol in there. But if you start looking at your ingredients labels, you're gonna find it everywhere. I know it's made in China, it's very cheap, it's a preservative, and it's getting linked to you know, various issues such as being a hormone disruptor. I met the founder of Codex, which is a skincare brand, and she's so against phenoxyethanol, and she was going on and on and linking it to uh, issues that her son had, that which is why she actually created her own skincare brand, which is phenoxyethanol free. And she and I were talking about doing the, the data and the research because she's also an engineer, so we kind of speak the same language in that sense. And um, she really feels that it's linked to a lot of harmful things. So I'll keep my eye on that and let you know, but I'm really into where the research comes from, who's funding the research, where's the research going? Because unfortunately that seems to be its own little corrupt world. That seems to be, I know it is, in its own little corrupt world. So um, I will keep you posted on phenoxyethanol. Also sulfates, now this is one that you've probably heard of before, sodium lauryl sulfate, so sodium laureth sulfate, there's two of them. There's actually more than two sulfates, but they get real foamy and they also use them in car washes and to clean up all sorts of things. So if you're using something that's super foamy, I think that's more of a psychological thing. Back you know, in the day when people would use very foamy shampoos and it would really lather up, people felt like they were getting really clean. But that ingredient actually doesn't need to be in there. And it can be, uh, it can really, um, I'm sorry, irritate your skin and it can also weaken your skin's barrier. So I always avoid anything real foamy. I find that it's incredibly stripping to the skin. So if you are using anything that has a lot of foam or you're start looking into your cleansers, see if those ingredients are in there and try to find something else. Also, uh, I have seen that they are linked to depression. I don't know what quantity that's in or where that study came from, but I have seen that. So something else to keep in mind. Now, um, I avoid aluminum in my deodorant. So I use the, uh, what's it called? Native deodorant from, Target. 
And if I'm not using that one, I usually buy, you know, a bunch of them before I go back home. I mean, before I come back to Dubai, I will use anything that's aluminum free. So aluminum is an ingredient you just don't want to put there and it is linked to breast cancer. Once again, that is, you know, you have to use it a lot, but if you are using it every single day, it's something to be mindful of. I also am uh, trying to avoid polyethylene glycol, the PEGS, and this is uh, due to some issues that it can have with your nervous system. And lastly, I always avoid any type of, I think they've been banned now at this point, but those plastic beads and also anything that is a scrub. Now I've talked before about this and I'm just gonna keep it here, whatever. We could talk about it in this video too, but those types of scrubs that are like the walnut scrubs or the apricot seeds or anything like that, that is something you don't want to use on your skin. And it can feel psychologically like, okay, I'm really getting rid of the dead skin, I'm scrubbing it off. It also feels great to do it, especially on the body. But what's happening is each one of those little those little, I don't know if kernel is the right word, but each one of those little pieces of the scrub, if you were to look at them under a microscope, they are so jagged and pointy and they're creating all of these little cuts, these tears on your skin. So they're breaking your skin's barrier. They're not strengthening it. And what they're gonna do is create little portals, little channels opened for then bacteria to get in and that could exacerbate acne. It could, you know, give you body acne. It can give you infections and it's going to give you uneven skin because now your skin, if you're looking up close to it, you would see that it's kind of all broken up and everything. So that's not going to give you stronger skin. So I avoid scrubs at all costs. I think they're awful for the skin and they're very much a kind of a 80s, 90s, early 2000s skincare mentality. Much These days, it's much better to use anything that's a chemical exfoliant. It's going to do a great job exfoliating your skin without ruining your skin's barrier. Uh, also, microplastics. I know Carbomer is a microplastic that is in a product I'm currently using. And I, once again, at some point, I will probably take that out of my skincare routine, but it's hard to find products that have every single thing I want and don't want in them. And like I said before, I feel like it will only happen when I formulate my own. But yeah, so that's my list right now of all the ingredients I won't use. If you're wondering what ingredients I will use, check out this video right here. It's doing really well on YouTube and it's just ingredients that are so great for the skin. Your skin is going to thank you for watching this video and so will your future self.